Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you all about the auto responder feature, which is found over here in the left hand navigation where you see these double arrows. Now, in the email world, an auto responder often refers to a pre scheduled, you know, a canned sequence or series of messages that you send somebody. So, if you are a MailChimp or an Aweber or Active Campaign user, you might use the terminology auto responder. In our world, in this software, we refer to that sort of a thing as a campaign, which you'll find in this tab. Um, in, in our software, an autoresponder refers to the software actually um, detecting keywords from incoming SMS messages and then, depending on the keyword, responding on your behalf. So, it's the true definition of, of an autoresponder. So we're going to create one here. Uh, again, use these double arrow icons on the left navigation for autoresponder. And I'm going to create one. I'm going to call it the training training demo autoresponder. And you can of course give a description if that's helpful for your organization. And here we are. So again, if you want to rename it, you could use the edit from this field up top. It is not currently attached to any of my phone numbers, but that's okay because we haven't finished it yet. Uh, and here's where you're going to enter your various keywords. So when an incoming SMS message comes and it includes any of the following keywords that I enter up here, the response that the system is going to send off is going to be in this field here. So for instance, if someone typed in, who is this? Or who this or who are you or who am I speaking to or with or something along those lines let me get the idea um, I could respond with this is Dave Newell how are you today F name and that merge field F name will substitute with their first name if this is contact is somebody who's in your existing list of contacts all right um, and then you can also uh, include an action so for instance anybody who sent you any one of these above keywords maybe you want to automatically move that contact to a different list you could do that with this move action or you could copy them so that they exist on this list as well as that second list um, so I want to copy them onto my second list perhaps uh, that's how I would do achieve that uh, and there's other actions here that you'll see detailed in a later video um, also you could make this an MMS multimedia message if you wanted to add a photo to your response um, but let's say that's that keyword and I'll hit save and now let's say um, we want to add a second keyword if they inquire about price or um, fee let's call it any fee or um, the fee they ask any of these questions um, we want to respond with something different um, which uh, you can intelligently pre-schedule in here so let's put you can get started for free and there are paid plans from 47 97 or 197 per month. And I'll save that. So now you can see multiple different keywords that they get. So again, simply you type in whatever it is. Let's say they use the number one and you could reply with re response number one. And I'll put one more here for two. Oops. Add it. Response number two.
Great. Now, uh, an incoming SMS that has any of these keywords will get the corresponding response message that we've set in here. Now, a default message is if they send something to you that does not match any of the above keywords. So you could put, for instance, I'll have to get back to you in a few minutes to give you enough time to uh, respond manually to that one. You see it appears here now in the default message. And then a no response keyword is a keyword that, that if you detect it incoming, if someone uses this particular word, you don't want the system to reply in any way whatsoever. So we like to use this one for naughty words. So there's a naughty word right there. Someone uses that bad, bad word. I don't want the system to automatically respond to this potentially aggravated user. Uh, I want to take the wheel and manually handle that one myself. So instead of potentially, you know, aggravating them further, uh, the system's not going to reply on my behalf. That, we're going to leave that one to me. All right, so now we've got that uh, autoresponder uh, partially set up. Um, the next thing we want to be able to do, oops, save it again, is apply this autoresponder to one of my numbers. Uh, so if I go over here to my um, number configuration tab, you'll see I have only got one number, and I'm going to uh, configure it. So I'm going to find that for incoming SMS messages, first of all, I want to activate that. And the response type I want it to be is an auto response. And this will be detailed in a later video. Uh, the auto responder I want to use is the only auto responder that we've currently got. And uh, this is if I wanted to go and do any editing to the one I just made. Of course, don't need to do that at this moment. So, uh, okay, so now we're all set for this, and let's test it out. So, if I go to um, my lists, for instance, my training demo list, and you'll see all the different people that are on this list. I'm going to open up my, my correspondence here with Mark Twain, and now I'm going to go over here on my, uh, my other computer where I've got Mark queued up and I'm going to and send the message who oops wrong keyboard who is this so when I now refresh this screen you'll see on the green left hand column on Mark's dialog that he sent the message who is this and the system has automatically on my behalf replied this is Dave Newell how are you today first name and it even substituted in Mark's first name here because he's he's a recognized contact now for instance uh, if Mark on the other hand goes ahead and types something else like uh, one and I refresh this page again. I think you know what we're going to see. We're going to see that the system is going to reply with a different response. Nope, oh, I was a little too quick on the draw. Mark hasn't finished sending his message yet. All right, now let's refresh. So Mark sent us the message one and the system replied on our behalf with response number one. Very creative. Now what if Mark sent us a message that contained more than one of our keywords? For instance, one, two. If Mark sent us a message that has more than one of our keywords, then how are we going to reply to that? And I'll refresh so you can see. We're actually going to fire off two responses. So Mark just sent us this, one, two, and so we replied with response number one, quickly followed by response number two. So that's something you can build into your, your logic for how you, you structure your um, autoresponders. 
So here's the next example. What if Mark sent us a message uh, that included one of our naughty words, one of our bad, bad, bad words from our bad word no response list? Well, do I want the system responding on my behalf to a potentially um, unhappy customer and perhaps further escalating things? No, I don't want that. So here's Mark's incoming bad word and the system has not replied to that. Likewise, if Mark uses uh, one of our um, you know, valid keywords, if he asks, who is this? and he includes the bad word in his message somewhere you might wonder well what does the system do with that because he's sending a valid keyword that we're listening for but he's also using one of the naughty words and so the logic in that you know he's 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 put phrase number one which is a valid keyword but he's also put phrase number two which we don't want to reply to and so the system does not reply because that's the behavior that you're going to want in that scenario so that you can you know if he's <laughs> if he sends you a message like that you can say chill dude it's Dave and hopefully that will de-escalate matters but um, anyway you get the idea that's how autoresponders work I'll go ahead and open it up once again, see if there's anything uh, that we need to, to show here. Uh, actually, one thing that has changed now, you can see that it is attached to one or more of the phone lines. Now, of course, we only have one phone number, one Twilio number uh, configured at the moment, but if there were multiple phone numbers, you'd see them all listed here. You can see what the different keywords that we listen for are and what their corresponding messages are. Um, and then I guess I didn't explain, I'll show you this, limit and fallback. If I'm creating a new keyword here, let's call it three. And my response is, res oops, response three. You could actually um, put an automatic limiter on here. So for instance, if you had a, a coupon deal, maybe better than three is coupon. And then your reply is um, your free coupon code is one two three four five six um, and then you want to put a limit so this is a message that can only be used uh, X number of times so let's say one because they can only send us that once we're only going to send them one free coupon anyone who tries to do it again is going to get the fallback message of sorry you've already gotten one coupon and we're going to save that into our autoresponder when they use the word coupon so now let's go back to um, my correspondence with Mark he should be in my contacts there he is okay now Mark over on his phone is going to type that keyword coupon coupon he's gonna send it and let's refresh and go to Mark's correspondence so there it is he sent us the the message coupon and we replied with your free coupon code is one two three four five six and then perhaps next week Mark gets a little greedy or forgetful and he types the same text message to us again seeking another coupon I'm gonna refresh the page and since we've set a limiter on that particular keyword when he sends here's the first instance that he sent a couple of minutes ago here's the second instance that he just sent but this time we're gonna give him a sorry you've already gotten one coupon so that's how the limiter feature works uh, on the autoresponder. Um, and that's it.